Now what we're going to suggest is that these four questions that we have in economics make it difficult for us to understand where the agreements are. So we're going to do a little transformation. Because what we have right now with these four questions, and we said the beauty of what they've done is that each of these groups, people who have studied each of these questions over the last couple hundred years, synthesizing thousands of years of work, have created these silos where people who are specialized in each one of these questions um, have different ways of validating what they're finding, thinking about what they're finding, talking about what they're finding, and it becomes difficult to learn across these different insights. It's also difficult to see what we're learning and how to see the agreements, and I'm going to suggest that's because we're not relating this back to what we know in our experience. We'll find that each one of these frameworks, resources and their dynamics, how do you think about organizations efficiently, what is value and how do you exchange value and who gets what part of the value that's generated, different allocation mechanisms are all very difficult to understand concepts that people don't work with. Therefore, it's very difficult to see in our agreements. What we want to do is see if we can shift that in a way to make it more obvious. To do that, I'm going to take the four questions and turn them around a little bit. We're going to say that instead of these four big questions of inputs, transformation, outputs, and that allocation mechanism, we're going to call these lenses. So if we come back to our experience that we talked about from the first chapter of the self, other, group, nature, and spirit, remembering that we said these are ways that we relate to our experience of the vibrancy through our relationship to self, other, group, nature, and spirit. And then we saw that in those, we also have the three levels of reality, of perceived reality, it's possibility, development, and things. So if we can come back to this, we know that this is our experience. Now, I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to emphasize here that it's the experiential way of understanding something. So we say, I know, and that was our first question in the very beginning, was I know the difference between low vibrancy and high vibrancy. And I know that it, I relate to it in these ways. So if we can start to see how to use these questions to help us understand these um, experience, then we'll be further along. So we're going to take the four questions that we had of resources, allocation, mechanism, value, and organization. And we're going to see that they're actually can be used as lenses on our experience. So what do we mean? Resources is a way of talking about what we see when we look at this experience of five by three, of the five relationships at the three levels of reality. So let's say, remember that the question in resources of inputs is, what do I see, how much is there when I look at these five relationships over these three levels of perceived reality? It's the how much question. From the experience, I can say when I look at the five relationships <clears throat> and the three levels of perceived reality, how much do I perceive is there? Is there a lot? Is there a little? And this is the resources question or the inputs question. So here we've made a subtle shift. And I just want to be really clear on that. With the resources, we're looking at the how much is there question is a lens at looking at what we already know in our own experience. So taking what is an abstract question of resources, which looks at the factors of production, what is a factor and what are the dynamics around that, to ch shifting it to helping us look through a lens at our own experience. So that when I know from my experience, as you described in the three circles, the inner, middle, and outer circles, of how much you experience was available in these five relationships at these three levels. So you do know what's available in these relationships and levels of reality in your experience. And that is the how much question. What we also saw is that the three factors of production in economics, land, labor, and capital, refer to labor is the capacities I bring that we support each other in bringing in the unique contributions somebody or an individual contributes to the group, which is self-othering group. So this is 
the labor part of resources when I look at it from the how much question. Nature and what manifests in it is the, the land and elaborated nature piece. And spirit is the source of creativity or the capital that's invested in something. So we have land, labor, and capital, the factors of production, when we look at our experience through the resource lens. The second lens we have is the allocation mechanism, where we ask, who decides? If in the first question we answer with scarcity, I don't see much there, then we have to say somebody's going to decide. One of the relationships will be primary in deciding. But the question here is, from our experience, when we look at how much is there, and then who decides how to allocate the resources that are there. The value question then asks, what criteria? If this is what we see about how much is there, and we say this is who's going to decide, is it going to be the self? Individuals decide? Is it going to be we decide out of equalness and fairness for each other? Is it the group, the health of the group that's important? Or is it our relationship with nature, our relationship with the source of creativity? Is that which one of these decides? And then the third question is, is what is the criteria that's used to decide how we're going to allocate these resources? And the organization question then becomes one of interaction. How do the different relationships react, interact? So if we said, for example, that who decides is the self, we all, all of these systems know that all five relationships are important. So if we choose the self as the organizing principle for who decides and the criteria for the self such as individual happiness or the utility I gain from um, that resource, the, the organization question becomes then, how does, it, how does that criteria interact with the other relationships? Because they're all important, and we know that they are. So what we've done is shift, again, from thinking of these four different questions of inputs that are transformed into outputs that are valued by somebody and how to think about that process to saying, they're not four separate siloed topics. Rather, they're four different lenses on your experience. So what this framing of the four lenses allows us to do is, are three things. One, it allows us to take advantage of what's been learned from the four big questions of economics over centuries. The resources, allocation mechanism, value theory, and organization theories. The second thing it allows us to do is this, relate this back to our own experience. What do I experience of how much there is in the five relationships and three levels? What do I experience of who decides at the different levels of perceived reality in these five relationships? What do I experience of what is valued in that set of relationships? And what do I experience about the interactions of them? So we're taking what are abstract, siloed concepts from economics that are difficult for many of us to remember and putting them in the form of questions that we can ask of something that we experience. So in my experience, I know the answers to these four questions. They're just different lenses on that experience. This also allows us to start looking and asking the question, which up till now is difficult to ask, is what is it that's in our agreements that supports our ability to be in these agreements? How, what kinds of processes do we have? What kinds of structures do we have? that support our ability to be in these kinds of agreements or different agreements as we look through these four lenses at these five relationships and three levels of perceived reality. So to wrap that up, we, we shifted from previously saying that there are these four agreements or there are agreements that we want to have and say now that there are these four big questions that we've been asking for a very long time and suggesting that if we shift them to think of them as lenses on our experience, then we can start to see where those agreements are using questions that have been developed over thousands of years by philosophers and people who've been thinking about human interactions.